Hi, I'm Mike Massimino, former NASA astronaut, and today I'll be answering questions about space food for Space TH. Four, three, two, one. And lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. I got to fly in space two times on the Space Shuttle to the Hubble Space Telescope, where I got to spacewalk four times to service and repair the telescope. And I'm here in Thailand to support some very exciting news about uh, sending meals, chicken meals, Thai chicken. It's gonna be a basil chicken flown to space. And so that's what we're here to do today is to discuss that. So it's different preparing a meal in space versus uh, on Earth. On Earth, you, you, know, you get ingredients and you mix things up and you get your chicken and cook it and mix it, mix it with the vegetables or the rice or whatever your noodles or whatever you're having. Um, in space, you don't really do that. It's all done on the ground for you and then the food is packaged. Uh, it's packaged so you just warm it up and you can eat it. So it's a lot easier to prepare food in space than it is here on Earth. So we have nutritionists and cooks that will prepare the food. Um, it, the process starts uh, with tasting the food. So there's many different dishes available and we get to try them and see which ones we like. And so we'll mark down the ones that we, we go from a scale of one to nine. So one is a food we wouldn't like very much. Nine is something we like a lot, you know, like, Thai basil chicken gets a nine probably, and something else you might not like as much gets a one. But they'll take that information, see what you like, and then uh, try to give you an, a, a meal or a menu that would have both things that you like, but also things that are good for you. So they're, they're looking at the vitamins that you get, the nutrients, the amount of cal calories that you need to intake. There's a lot of science that goes into this in preparing the menu. And the menu is comes from the food that that we that we might hopefully like. They can give you things you like, um, and that is prepared fresh and then sealed uh, so that it will last for a very long time. And when it gets to space, it'll be good for you to eat. I had a lot of my favorites in space. I was able to get uh, lasagna, which I really like, macaroni and cheese, ravioli, shrimp. I really like chimp, which it was, it was prepared with a spicy sauce. So I had a lot of food that I liked, but uh, didn't have any Thai basil chicken. My favorite Thai food there is, there's two foods that I like very much. I like Thai basil chicken and I like pad Thai chicken as well. Those are my two favorites. Yeah, there are, you know, space has a lot of challenges, including your digestion. Gravity does help with our digestion. So we, we try to eat um, foods that will help us digest our food. So sometimes we can take a supplement like a vitamin that can help us with digestion or we can eat certain foods like fruit really helps. Although we can't get fresh fruit, fruit a lot of fresh fruit in space, it'll go bad. We don't have good refrigeration. So I ate a lot of dried fruit. So we try to eat those items to get us, get our digestive system working well while we're still on the ground before the flight. And then when we go to space, we try to eat foods like dried fruit and maybe some supplements that allow help with our digestion because your digestion is different in space where there's zero gravity versus you have some gravity that actually helps you digest on Earth. Foodborne illness uh, is a concern everywhere on Earth and in space. Space, it, it, there's no germs in space unless we bring them with us. There's no bacteria that can grow there or it easily is. That, that's not an issue. We're really concerned about bringing something, bringing germs or bacteria with us to space. So the people, you want to be healthy when you go to space, so you're not bringing any disease there with you. And also the food is, is made, we're made sure that that food is, is safe on the ground. It's cooked and tested and then packaged so that bacteria won't grow. So we're not really, we're very concerned about it, but because of the way we do things and the way it's processed, we're not worried about it because the food we get in space is free of bacteria and germs. And uh, we're not, not worried about food, foodborne illness in space. Yeah, there's some, some people call it a change of taste in space. And some people in space, once they get to space, 
They seem to want more spicier food, which I think why the Thai food would be a good solution is because it's fairly spicy, at least for me anyway. Um, but I don't know if it's so much a, a change of taste with your tongue and your taste buds. I think it's more that you don't get the same aroma that you get. You're not, in, especially your first few days in space, your, your fluid in your body is held in place by, on, on Earth by gravity. When you get to space, it kind of floats up in your body and you get a full head, you get like, like almost like a bit of a, you feel like you have a cold, a little stuffiness, you don't smell as well. Also, heat doesn't rise in space. Gravity has convect where heat rises. That usually is hot food will have a smell to it and you'll smell it. So a lot of what we taste is affected by how we smell the food. So uh, that sometimes affects people's ability to taste. They don't seem to taste the same as they do. They don't taste food the same on space. But I think it's mainly because you're not smelling as clearly. That's why spicy food is so popular. We have, we're very, very much like, most aspects very much like spicy food because it kind of clears you out. It's more, it has more flavor, but it's also that spice sometimes will clear up your sinuses a little bit too, to allow you to taste the food better. We're not really sure what space itself smells like because when you're outside a spaceship in space, when you're inside the spaceship, you smell more, you smell each other, you'll smell, yeah, it just smells like regular, what we smell inside. But the, the, one of the questions is, what does it smell outside of space? But the only way to really smell it would be to take your helmet off and you wouldn't, that wouldn't work because you wouldn't be able to survive very long like that. So uh, the closest thing we've, we've come, I think, to actually smelling it is after a spacewalk. So when you, go into a, when you do a spacewalk, you go into an airlock and you go to the airlock and there's a door that leads to space and there's a door that leads to the spaceship. So you're going through the spaceship door and then you close it and then you evacuate all the air, and then you open the door to space and you go out and do your spacewalk. So the, so the airlock is exposed to the vacuum of space for hours. And then you come back in and you close that door and you pump air back in, and then you close the door that leads to the spaceship. And if you poke your head in there from this, as soon as you open that door, before the air mixes with the air inside of the spaceship, you smell a very distinct odor. It smells, it, to me, it smells like burnt metal, very metallic smell. And it could be the outgassing of the metal in the airlock because everything has, has got like trapped gases in it. I don't know if you've ever been like in a, in a new car, it's got that like, it's got a certain smell to it. It's mainly the plastics and the fabrics and the car. You know, there's still just, it's just been, you know, it just came off, came out of the factory. And some of that the, the, is still outgassing some of the, and then after a while it all outgasses and you don't smell it any longer. But in space, there's, in the vacuum of space, things will, will outgas more. Even things that don't, uh, that are, have already been outgassed on Earth, when it gets to space, more of that gas now because there's a vacuum will come out. So it could just be the outgassing of the metal, or it could be the way space actually smells. So I'd like to believe that's what space actually smells like. Well, I did get to bring, astronauts do get to bring some bonus food items, some special food items that maybe are not on the menu. Um, I wanted to bring some cookies from uh, my friend's bakery in Brooklyn, New York. It's called Michael's Bakery of Brooklyn. And Michael made me a bunch of biscotti. They were bite-sized biscotti. They tested them in the food lab to make sure that they were good, that they wouldn't cause any problems, so they were safe. They packaged them, they were small, they had to be bite-sized because you had to put the whole thing in your mouth because crumbs are a problem too. If you get crumbs floating around, you can get them in your eye, you can inhale them, no good. So the cookie needed to be eaten in one bite and that's what they were. So that was my special bonus item, food and space on my flights, was biscotti, was cookies from Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. Uh, now, if I could bring anything with me, I would bring a pizza. That's what I would bring. Also from Brooklyn, New York, but I wasn't able to do that. No Hawaiian. <laughs> I would not bring a Hawaiian pizza, though. I just want to be clear on that. I would bring a plain cheese pizza or a pepperoni pizza from Grimaldi's in Brooklyn, or from Carmelo's in Franklin Square, or from Umberto's in New Hyde Park. These are where I grew up. So I would bring pizza from my hometown, and we would never put pineapple on a pizza. Yeah, so. Um, on the space station, we, there's no way to produce water easily. They bring a lot of water up on different supply missions. 
but uh, you need to recycle water, which means recycling urine. So as my friend says, uh, today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee because your water, you're going to be putting it back into yourself. So the, so the, you, you know, you drink it and you pee it out and then you're going to drink it again. But what we do is, uh, is on the space station, the water is, the urine, also sweat, um, anything that when you have like a wet towel or anything, all that moisture in the air, it all gets collected along with the urine and it is cleaned and treated so you can drink it again. And I've, I've had this water and it tastes absolutely fine. If it didn't, I would have a problem with it, but, but it tastes perfectly fine. It's clean, there's nothing wrong with it. So some food is, is uh, dehydrated food where the water is taken out, like spaghetti or you know, rice, things like that. The, there's no water, then you add water and then you can get to eat it. And then some of the food is packaged um, meals ready to eat more they're, they're packaged in a pouch and you can warm them up and eat them but the, the reason we do it that way a lot of it is that so you, the way you package things so if you are able to the way we package the food they're kind of in thin packets so in space space is an issue if, if things weigh a lot if they're if uh, they take up a lot of room it's hard to get them to space so you want things that could be stacked easily we use tortilla we don't use bread tortillas you know very thin you can hold a whole bunch of those in there um, they also don't create a lot of crumbs and they don't they don't go they, they say they stay good they don't go bad for a while but with the dehydrated food what it allows it allows us to kind of shrink the food down when you take the water out of these food items like shrimp or pasta or rice um, it, it removes all the water therefore it removes a lot of the weight uh, and it also removes um, the, the size, it reduces the size. So you can take more food that way by having it be dehydrated. I, I think all the young, young people here, the young Thai generation that are interested in space, I think that we're living in a world now where there, anything is possible and we're able to communicate and learn from each other and the world is becoming more connected. And I think there will be lots of opportunities to participate in the space program, whether that's contributing to it while on Earth or going yourself. And we don't know what's going to happen years from now. More and more companies are getting involved. So it's not just governments, but it's also private companies going to space. So if you're interested in space technology, it's not just for some people in the world. It's really for the whole world. And I would encourage you to pursue it because it's a lot of fun and it's a very rewarding career to, to have a career in space.